allowed to swear? You're allowed. I really don't want to be here. You better hit. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Can you imagine? <laughs> a book. A hairy. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start this camera over here. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to episode 31 of Knights at the Round Table. Today we are discussing the book Dealing with Dragons by Patricia C. Reedy. This is a book about a young princess who, bored with being a princess, runs away to find excitement and gets drawn into all sorts of dragon drama. Who would like to start with their general impressions of the book? Okay, um, well, I read this the, for the first time when I was, um, I think I was 11 years old, um, and I fell in love with it. It was at a time when um, I finished reading Harry Potter, and I was looking for more fantasy, and uh, I really, really fell in love with the, the whole series, but this book in particular, um, just because it showed such a strong female character, and also um, other types of characters as well that so it wasn't just that like oh you have to be a strong female character there was other sides and there was always a character I could relate to which was really nice. Um, I, I really enjoyed the book it was uh, it was a short book a quick read which is a nice break from what I normally read but uh, <laughs> um, also to found that the um, the writing style um, was descriptive enough but left room for your own imagination to kind of take over and kind of put yourself in in a bit there as well to get more involved the uh, author left room for that and so I found in, in the way it's written it kind of drew me in a bit uh, more to the book. I, I really enjoyed the uh, writing style. Okay, um, I couldn't get my hands on a physical copy of the book so um, I got the audio book and they had a variety of different people reading, so it was more like a radio play than it was an audiobook. But it was fun and interesting, and the story, yes, I liked very much. I could identify with uh, the main character. And uh, um, for young audiences, I think it's a great book. Um, but if you're looking for something heavy and epic, this is not it. <laughs> nope. 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 Yeah, so um, I did like um, specifically the main character. Whose name I can't remember anymore. Simarine? Simarine. Simarine. Yeah, Simarine. Princess Simarine. We were literally discussing <laughs> this before the camera went on. Princess Simarine, um, who hated all the lessons on propriety and embroidery and dance. All the typical things that a princess that would have to do. Would have she to do, just yeah. was like, she no. <laughs> not really interested in. She was interested in fencing and magic and cooking. And I could... Not so much the cooking. <laughs> but I could relate. <laughs> uh, I could relate to uh, not wanting to do all the stuff that a, a lady is expected to do. And I still get that to this day when I tell my dad about stuff that I'm doing. He just sort of gives me a look and is like, Really? What do you. Are you. Do you want to be like a, a, an action hero or something? I'm like, yes. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly I it. do. I ride and I fight and I want to be an action hero. Uh, ladylike is not really in my vocabulary. So I liked the main character very much. I thought uh, I could identify with her very well. And along the same lines, I could envision a number of people I know who would not identify with her very well. So she was, she was well rounded and the characters that contrasted with her were equally as well rounded. So I, I enjoyed that about the book. Yeah, like uh, her, she befriends one of the princesses. Normally she doesn't like other princesses, she thinks they're empty headed and um, yeah. kind of, <laughs> yeah, but then she befriends one, uh, Alianora, who is, tries really hard to be as brave as Princess Simone and everything, but she's a bit more um, timid, a little bit more scared, and it was kind of nice to show that even though um, that, that wasn't her personality, she was still trying for Simran and trying to be strong. And well, she was brave in important moments, mm -hmm. though. Like, yeah. Without thinking, she oh. stood up to her own dragon, yep. she melted a wizard, and she, she was brave, she wasn't yeah. just very, uh, she didn't have Princess Simran's bravado, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but she was incredibly courageous. I liked her too. Yeah. Although, I have to say, 
I'm sorry to the voice actress, but whoever read her in the audiobook, that she was annoying. Oh. <laughs> she, she had that perfect, really annoying sort of nasal pitch that oh. I just felt. That's really unfortunate. It, it is unfortunate, because her character was so awesome. But. I, I thought that Tom, one of the, one of the, this is obviously, obviously written for younger crowd, mm -hmm. which you are in that, at that point in life, you're, you're discovering who you are, shaping who you want to be, and molding into, or forming into the person you want to be. And I think that, um, in particular, for a number of uh, young, young girls, um, this book would be good for them in, in the fact that just sort of shows that you um, don't have to be what other people want you to be. It's just because of social pressure doesn't mean you have to uh, form to that. Um, you, you can still be brave, headstrong, and you can be smart. You can do all that, and you can do all that without being stubborn, and you can do all that without being mean as well. And Princess Simone, I think, uh, found that balance within, within herself that uh, was able to pull that through. Uh, yeah, and to the counter of that, you don't always have to be uh, hyper-intelligent or very good with a sword or mm -hmm. anything like that to be a hero as evidenced by um, yeah. Nora. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was. it is. It's a great book for young girls to read, I think. And I remind you, what's the, I can't remember the characters. Um, because it was all audio, I didn't write any of them down. And I want to say Lumiere, but no, that was the candlestick. From the beginning of the beat. The knight who kept trying to... Oh, it's Randwell. Was, it, was that him? Randwell, yeah. Oh, uh, I love Randwell. Do you? I want to just punch him. Well, yeah, I mean, when that, like, the whole scene with, with the genie, and he was trying so hard. No, yeah, that's true. <laughs> he was trying to be helpful, but he, kept, he was a bit of an earth and bumbled yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's true. But, and you know, he was, uh, as much as he, he wanted to do it for being proper and all that stuff, he did really, I think, did care about Simmering, and he was worried about her. Um, but he was also willing to let her go, which I think is a really important lesson, too. Like, that if someone says no, oh, okay, and you finish, too. <laughs> no means no people. <laughs> So he, he was willing to move on, and he ended up being really happy with Princess Cara Duell, who was one of the uh, blonde, stereotypical princesses. Uh, yeah, do they end up being really happy? Because in this book, he, he just he rescues her, and that's all you hear about it. Um, I can't remember if they pop up. I think they do pop up, and they are happy. Oh, okay. Oh, yay! <laughs> there you go. You got your happy. Yeah, yeah. But at least for this character, like, you know, if you want to follow the typical um, dragon princess story, then yes, you have your Prince Charming, but there doesn't have to be a romance. There doesn't have to be a falling in love with Prince Charming. She's strong enough to stand on her own. He's strong enough to stand on their own. Just let them be. Mm. Let the characters evolve as they are. They don't need to rely on another person. I was that. really, really worried when the stone prince showed up in the story uh, that the Cimmerine would then become like a rescued princess, and I am, spoiler alert, <laughs> super glad she didn't. I am so glad she was like, yeah, no, I still don't want to get married, have fun, you crazy kids, and goes back to living with the dragons. Yeah. Because yeah. Oh, I was, I was like, please don't do this, please don't do this, but I will be so mad if you do this. <laughs> and they didn't. I found, uh, as well in the book, there's a certain amount of wit and humor in there as well. Which, which was nice. I mean, it's, it's not meant to be an overly serious book, which is fine, but it's not Terry Pratchett either. Um, <laughs> uh, but, like, for example, a um, little passage there. Uh, <clears throat> he doesn't seem very impressed, Simmering commented in some music. Why should he be? Kazuma said. Well, you're a dragon, Simmering answered, a little taken aback. What difference does that make to a cat? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, just little things like that, heavy smirking and chuckling through. And, well, anyone that has a cat, you know, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Cats are generally unimpressed. <laughs> yeah. But there's little bits <clears throat> of humor through there, which is nice. Yeah, there are. And the references to other fairy tales yeah, I always, love always put a smile on my face. <laughs> like the Stone Prince uh, went to a school for people who were supposed to do great things. and. Uh, one of his classmates, Jack, he just wanted to go back and tend to his beans, but he ended up killing a giant and stealing a golden <laughs> half. <laughs> it's very cute. I think there was a mention of 
King Arthur. In yeah, the movie? yeah. His friend Art went Art, and got yeah. an enchanted sword out of a stone. Yes, that was, that was the line. And I, I was, I sat on my bed and I'm like, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, there were these little flashes that I think um, maybe not so young audiences would appreciate, but if you're an older reader, they will put a smile on your face. I didn't like those little flashes. Um, saying about the, the thing in the, 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 the... <laughs> oh my, the references to other uh, fairy tales and yes. stuff like that, and how it's engaging in that way, and, and, and you know, it's, it's a short book, and anyone that begrudges it because it's a short book, and you're like, oh, I wish it was a bigger book. Just get, just get all four books and read them back to back. They'll be a normal size book. They'll be fine. Yeah, I did not actually realize that this was the first in a series. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> in here, right? <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, as it continues. I may or may not cut that out. <laughs> I haven't decided yet. Yeah, I was going to say, um, I did not realized that that was um, part of a larger series and I'm glad it was actually. I think I might go through and read the rest of them because they're fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. The second one is from the point of view of a new character, uh, King Mendenbar. And then King the, Mendenbar? Yeah. The third one the is um, from the point of view of the witch Morwen, which is really awesome because then you Ooh. hear the cats. They have the voices and they talk oh, to her. Oh really? I liked Morn Morn? Morwen. <laughs> Morwen. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm not even drinking alcohol. I think this might be the problem. <laughs> I liked Morwen a lot. And then the, the last one is a uh, first person point of view, which is a little different. And I won't say who the ca character follows with that one. They'll have to read to find it. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I would. Yeah, they are very fast reads, and it's a lot of fun too. If, you're in between darker reads to pick up something that might clear your mind a little bit. This would be a good yeah. book for that. Just something completely random just to throw out there. Um, Patricia Reedy? Reedy. Reedy. Um, author, right? She's first published in 74. Um, she graduated Carleton College in Minnesota with a BA of Biology. Oh, did she really? And she managed to get away without taking any English courses at all and became a writer. Wow. So can you imagine that going in for something and that's completely not related to writing and then ended up from the writing field? I don't know how that happens. Well, I'm sure you have to be literate to write a biology report. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and have a certain amount of competency for it, for sure. Well, yeah. But but it's, it's just like it's not even, if you're, if you're, say, going into criminology and then you write detective novels, I can see some application there, biology, no, 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 not so much. But anyhow, it's just brand new. Well, I don't know, it, I, maybe in her notes, she has extensive uh, notes on the biology of dragons or something. Speaking of dragons, <laughs> I liked that uh, these dragons um, oscillated between what you would imagine a dragon to be, so fear, fearsome and eats people and kills knights and that kind of thing, and also just generally awesome folk who have their own... Who enjoy Cherry's Jubilee. Who enjoy Cherry's Jubilee, exactly, and read a lot. And, uh, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't, is this early on in the troop where dragons are hyper-intelligent things? I, I, I should have researched that a little bit on the, the issues of like dragons, because they're almost always portrayed as being very, very clever. Um, but I, I'm not sure for how long that's been the case. I like too that um, all the dragons in this book had very unique um, personalities and everything, mm -hmm. so they had like mm -hmm. a really forgetful old guy who was sort of like bumbling, and then they had the calculating sort of more evil one, and then they had ones that were just, um, they didn't like dealing with people, and so that was really interesting, I found too, that they were fully rounded characters in themselves, in themselves and not just yeah. a general species or something. I also liked that the, the title of King was a job, it was an occupation, it had nothing to do with the gender of the person occupying it and queen was something completely different. And according to the dragons, they're really boring and they really <laughs> wanted the job, so it's been vacant for years. <laughs> so that, 
I really enjoyed that about that book, that you're a king, it doesn't matter if you're a girl dragon or a boy dragon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And um, again, going back to some of the humor, um, there's a lot of, uh, when you think about dragons, princesses and knights come to free the princess and rescue, there's a lot of stereotypes with them with the atypical stories. And then the dragon's POV on that. It's like, well, having a princess is nice and all, but it's kind of overrated. It comes with problems. You mean the knights. Well, those two. And it's, it's kind of like bringing out uh, fresh fruits at, at a gathering just to, just to say that yeah. you know, as, a, as a social status thing. Yeah, it's, it's nice, but you can just... You can do without. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a social status thing along the same lines of ha as having exotic fruit. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it's not... It, it's just um, the way she, she takes the typical fantasy and fairy tale type things and just puts a new slant on them is... is uh, Amusing. Yeah, yeah, it's very amusing. And uh, I like that uh, she um, and uh, Lord Simmerine and her dragon, Kazul, <laughs> I swear I need a drink, <laughs> uh, are, end up being really good friends after. Mm -hmm. And that uh, Kazul doesn't think she can do without him, even though she's now, spoiler alert, king. And. Uh, <laughs> well, I lost the servant. <laughs> And we'll have lots of dragon servants to do everything that she wants, but she still wants uh, Princess Cinerine around. That was cute. Made me happy. <laughs> and that Princess Cinerine wants to stay around. Also made me happy. So yeah, any other thoughts? I don't know. Um, definitely recommend for all ages. And. Yeah, just especially if you enjoy fantasy, if you really like fairy tales and everything, it's a good intro book to, I think, as well, if you're a little bit unsure whether you want to get into that genre, because um, it is a really easy read. Yeah, this is, this is all, of course, provided that you like young adult um, books. They're really hit and miss for me, although I've kind of liked all the ones I've read thus far. Uh, I used to find them really hit and miss. Maybe I was just an incredible star when I was growing up. Uh, but I skipped the young adult phase entirely and went from like Mr. Wiggle to <laughs> Lord of the Rings. And so there was nothing in between. Um, and if you're looking for a more challenging read and epic landscapes and stuff, this is not going to be the book for you. Uh, but it is, yeah, it's a fun, like, read. I think it depends as well as the, the, the landscapes and such, as you're saying. Uh, it depends on how active one's imagination is. If you need to be told what everything looks like and you can't allow your mind to fill in the blanks, then you might find it a bit, well, shallow, lack of depth. But, I mean, you've got to let your mind fill in things a little bit at this point. But I didn't, you know, that's, that's all I can yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, it, of course there aren't Tolkien explanations about the caves. Uh, <laughs> if it was, it'd be 800 pages. Yeah, yeah, it would be a very, very different book. Um, <laughs> Who do we kill? Him. <clears throat> Execute him now. Wait, ink poisoning! Ah! Okay, um... Uh, I didn't... I didn't find any major problems with the book. Really, I'm trying to think of. <laughs> Turn your phone off. Normally, I have not saw it. Normally. True story. Oh, this is totally going in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to talk about uh, issues I had with the book, but I can't really think of any that I really had with the book, except for the goofiness of the knight whose name I. Will or whatever his <laughs> name <Randall. laughs> That dude. His incompeten incompetence was really just ridiculous. Which you know, you kind of expect for a book aimed at like 8 to 12 year olds. Yeah. So, anyway, if you were to give this out of 5 stars. Well, I have a lot of nostalgia around it, so um, I'm gonna have to give it 5 because I just, I loved it as a young girl. And, I still love it now, so yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't read it when I was younger, um, but 
I, I, I'd go with four. There's a lot of references, like I said, uh, was mentioned about the referencing to other fairy tales, and that, that just kind of added a lot of humor to it. I really enjoyed it. It's not it quite as. Uh, I enjoy Tolkien style books, this isn't it. But uh, it, it was an overall good read. Yeah, um, I gave it a three uh, for much the same reasons. Uh, it's a fun, light read, and I love the references to other fairy tales in this book. And I really liked the uh, Princess Simmery uh, as a character because I, I could relate to her so well. And I think as a young girl, I could have related to her quite a bit more than I already do, uh, having issues with being ladylike. I mean, I was playing orcs and elves in the backyard with my little brother when I was. <laughs> we made our own wooden swords and we killed each other. That's essentially what happened. Um, but I do prefer my fantasy much more on the epic side. Uh, I find it easier to fall into worlds that are um, heavily crafted, is, I guess would be a word, where the richness of detail is there and the peril feels much greater. I fall into worlds like that much more easily. This was a light, fun, fluff read, but that's pretty much all it is. So yeah, please stars. Still worth the read though, I, I do recommend it. So who would like to pick the next book? <laughs> no. Let me see. The next book is Doorways in the Sand by Roger Zen Zal Zel Zaini? Zalazny. Roger Zalazny, because I can read. <laughs> I'll put it up in the doobly doo thing there. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're going to be reading. Um, not uh, next week, though. Oh, next fortnight. Next fortnight we'll be uh, recording at CanCon here in Ottawa, uh, which is Ottawa's Canada. Ottawa's. Oh my lord. Ottawa's Speculative Fiction Convention. Uh, we'll be doing a special recording there where we will be uh, reading a book that I will announce later. So stay tuned for that. If you want to keep abreast of what we're doing, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. If you want to join the discussion, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. This is what you get for not having a drink training.